welcome uh, Jugu Abraham. Jugu is an old friend and a film buff from early 80s. And uh, he's, he has been a journalist. He went on to the public affairs part of it with Dick Rissat. Then he runs a website or a blog which 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 is very very uh, significant and famous across the world it's called the movies which makes you think and uh, since jugu is an early convert to meaningful films we thought we will do a discussion with him who thinks that nirmalyam is as good as a film of uh, in, in Ingmar Bergman and Nirmalyam when I say is by MD Vasudevan Nair who just celebrated his 90th birthday yesterday and the whole of Kerala was uh, media and everybody was wishing him because he's uh, considered to be one of the uh, the pioneers in modern Malayalam writing so Jugu welcome and uh, let me ask you uh, with the first question about why do you think Nirmalyam is such a great film? Thank you very much, uh, Chiran, for giving me the opportunity to talk about a film like Nirmalyam, which has been probably forgotten by many people outside Kerala. And uh, even when they discuss Indian films, Nirmalyam never figures on those lists. Even though Nirmalyam has an exquisite credibility in terms of awards. Number one, it won the Golden Lotus. It's very rare for an Indian uh, Malayalam film to win the uh, Golden Lotus. It won the Golden Lotus and also won the Silver Lotus for P.J. Anthony's acting. But that was not the end of the story. It's very rare that a Golden Lotus winning Malayalam film also wins or sweeps all the Kerala State Awards that year. It was a rare achievement for any film which gets the national attention and the state's attention in that particular year. And still, years and decades after it was made, people rarely mention it. And that I felt was very unfortunate. One of the possibilities is people outside Kerala have not accessed copies of the film with English subtitles. Even today, when you go on the YouTube, you'll find the film loaded, but there are no subtitles. So people abroad, when they hear that I rate this film very highly, they are not able to see what makes this film so great. Now, let me look at the award for the film in 1973 by itself. I, I think there are various kinds of jury. You didn't explain because this, this Golden Lotus of National Award is not there. It is best film kind of thing. I think the Golden Lotus doesn't, you know, come out come to the fore. So here, it, uh, the, Nirmalim was the best film of the year of 1973. Uh, and won the Golden Lotus and P.J. Anthony, the lead character, got the best award for the best actor right. for the year. Yes. Yeah, continue. And then, uh, if you look at what, uh, how the film got that award, it's very important to look at the jury that was looking at it. The jury had eminent people on that particular year. The, one of them was Ramesh Thapa, the very famous uh, editor of... Uh, Seminar. You had Teji Bachchan, no, no, who uh, was the mother of Amitabh Bachchan. Jugu, Jugu, this is this is I think a year before. That is a seventy-two. This was for Swamiram. Uh, did you look up the online because Swamiram? Uh, I don't know whether they continue with the same jury in the next year also. But seventy-two award for Adur uh, Ramesh Tapar was the jury chairman and Teji was there. I know the list. But seventy three, I don't, I don't, I don't remember correctly. So just, just a caution. What of you can, you can check. But on the Wikipedia, it shows that the uh, year of so, seventy three, so, when they got the award, it was Ramesh Thapa, Teji, but uh, Teji Bachchan, 
Kismat Chuktai and Dilip Padgaonkar on the jury. I, 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 you see, there is the website of uh, DFI. I will check again, recheck. Because I know for sure that... They yeah, need, it doesn't that, matter. It doesn't matter. Wikipedia, on the, hey, it, even if... But it, yeah, I know, yeah, but, but the, uh, it doesn't matter. But in the year that this film won, uh, the uh, Golden Lotus, the competing, the competing film in that year were Girish Karnad's Kada, which is also a marvelous film. Yeah. There was Satyus Garam Hava. There was Money Calls Duvida. There was uh, Satyat Rai's Ashani Sanket and Mrinal Sen's Padatik. Now, all of these are very good films. Yeah. For uh, Nirmalayam to get an award over all these films is a really remarkable achievement. Yeah. And the fact that once it got the award, it got similar uh, approval from the state, that makes it incredible. Yeah. yeah the, the, and uh, one of the reasons yeah, was were, probably yeah. the story itself. Yeah. Empty Vasudevan Naya's story is remarkable. Yeah. And whenever I look at uh, a, a film critically, I always see the element of script writing. And the script writing is the strength of this film. And that is because M.T. Vasudhan Nair is a writer. And that comes through in the film. And uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier also that I always tend to view this film alongside Bergman's Winter Light. Which has a similar story, a similar structure, but the ending is totally different. But it also talks about a person who is working in a religious place who is transformed by the end of the film. Now, that's very interesting for me in both cases, because in both cases, in the case of Bergman and in Empty Vasudhan Nair, the script writer is the director. Okay. That's a very important factor. I always tend to give a lot of credibility to a director who is directing a film based on his original script. Yeah. And that's in this case. Yeah. And that's why this film is really remarkable. And I find that, of course, it, it was in this point of time that most of the directors in India were talking about bringing realism to the core. And that was very much underscored in this film, realism. Yeah. When there was so much of uh, worry about getting jobs after the, uh, the independence, there was people, there were people coming out with good education, not able to get a job because they didn't have experience. And these are kinds of things that most of those people face. And how that changes the lifestyle of the people associated with religion and uh, temples in the case of Nirmalayam, in the case of Bergman, it is churches and the people who go to war in the Second World War. So there is this problem of economics, which is affecting society and in turn affecting religion. So this was very interesting for me to compare both. But Ingmar Bergen had made the, his film about 10 years before and uh, uh, it was in 73 that you find M.T. Vasudhan and I are making the film. But it's very interesting because it is the last few bits of the film which makes the whole story come alive. Yeah. You wonder what it's all leading up to. But it's yeah. towards the end that everything becomes very yeah. relevant. Whatever has preceded yeah. becomes relevant. Yeah. And so that's something that I found very interesting because the director knows the story and knows how to take it forward. Yeah. And also probably because he was a good writer, he was able to bring in the concepts of flashbacks. There are lots of flashbacks in this film. And that is very interesting for me, even to see, uh, just I saw a recent, recently I saw the film again, and the flashbacks show P.J. Anthony, the main actor, going back in time 
by 20 years and looking young. Now, how many directors around the world would have the same character played by the same actor 20 years with a 20 year difference? They would probably use another director, uh, actor to play the younger role. But here was PJ Anthony playing the old man and the young man with equal credibility. So these are fascinating aspects of the film, which is rarely encountered in Indian cinema or for that matter, world cinema. And that is very interesting. And these are the things that probably many people who look at Indian cinema need to highlight and appreciate. Yeah, uh, that, that because point, uh, 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 my point, uh, uh, Jugo, is that in 70s, there are too many films about this change, changes which is happening. The transition from a feudal society right. to, to the modern, but it has not become modern. But the feudal structure has gone heavier, and people were struggling to keep up with the changes. So, don't you think that that comes out very, very clearly and uh, without any doubt, without any, 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 any given any margin, so anything that comes out very, very clearly for me? Is it, is it not for you? Is it, is, it, is it also true? Yes, it is very much. It, it is very much the uh, social structure is, which is being dissected and presented in so many different ways. For, for me, one of the best part was when you see the daughter of Vilichapad, the main character, uh, who's an oracle. And she is hardly having any food in the house. And the parents are only able to boil rice. They're not even able to cook vegetables to go along with the rice. And she is walking around along the road about to throw the extra rice away. And then she sees somebody who is begging for rice and she gives him that rice. And that person is so happy. He's mentally challenged, but he's so happy to get that bowl of rice without any curry or any uh, additional uh, facets to the meal. Yeah. But that is so important in the sense that when a person who doesn't have a meal mm. knows the importance of giving things yeah. to somebody else. Yeah. You know, and that is a, this is a film which is talking about the people who have wealth who don't like to part with their wealth. Here is a person who hardly has money but is ready to give what little they have to somebody else without any question. The same thing is done in, late, in the film, again, by Velichapad, who also is ready to give money to his Bhagavati, uh, the deity that he is uh, uh, looking after. He gives the money for uh, the temple, but he doesn't have money for his own family to survive. But he is ready to give the money as a donation to the uh, temple. So yeah. that's a very interesting fa facet that M.T. Vasudevan Nair has been able to uh, show in the film. Yeah, uh, and also the importance uh, of people's attitudes. Yeah, also the way he brought out the father character who is lying in the bed, but he's a witness to the entire things. Right. Happening. And his, you know, his response is only his eyes. He can't even speak. That's true. He's that is true. Yes. I think that is that that way he put time, the concept of time with the father. The time is he is there, paralyzed and uh, without response, but it's seeing everything and responding in its own way. I think that was that is a very beautiful part of that film, that character. Yeah, true. That's, some of these sequences are wonderful. And uh, uh, the way uh, Ramendra Babu was able to capture it all uh, with the camera is also remarkable because you don't see the element of cinematography very uh, obviously in this film, but it is very much there because uh, the indoor sequences show the closeness of the camera to the uh, to the individuals that are being photographed. And that is very, very well done for a film in 1973. Yes. I mean, you have very, very poor lighting situations there, but still, they are able to do that. Yeah, that's I, mean, uh, that, it is, I think that's the KK Mahajan school of photo cinematography, which is coming up 
you know, post uh, FTI uh, training, 